All right. Welcome back, everyone, to Plant-Based Kidney Health. As always, I'm Dr. Sean Hashmi. My partner is Michelle Crosmer. Michelle, we are back for another episode. And I got to tell you, I was just looking at the numbers. This is our episode number 104. That's a lot. That's so a lot. For, those, for those of you guys who are joining us for the first time, you got 103 more episodes to watch to learn all about kidney disease. And what's fascinating is, is after doing over 100 episodes, we're still getting questions and we're still realizing there's so many topics we haven't even covered yet. Yeah, it's crazy when we, you know, look at the comments and suggestions on episodes. I mean, I, the uh, Google list that I have where, you know, I keep everything there's like hundreds and hundreds of topics on there. So again, we're keeping track of them. We try to do these as often as we can, but definitely there's some that come up and we're, are asked multiple times over and over again. So, and then we like to address them. So. All right. So with that guys, today's topic is all about metabolic acidosis. What the heck is it and why should you care? So let's start by telling you a little bit about what happens in your body and why the kidneys are so vital to what happens. You know, when you have your kidneys that are functioning normally, they do this remarkable job of balancing the acid and the base in the body. If you get too much of base in the body or too much of acid in the body, they're the ones who regulate it. Now, your breathing is something that can do it short term. So in other words, if you have too much acid in the body, what's going to happen is you're going to start to breathe faster because you want to blow off the acid from your lungs out there. And the idea there is you're creating an environment with more base inside your body to counteract the acid. But that's a very limited amount of work you can do. And that's short term. Long term is the job of the kidneys. So when we talk about acidosis, acid or too much acid is actually an independent risk factor for the progression of kidney disease. So here's where it becomes interesting. As kidneys get worse, you start to get more acid buildup inside the body. As more acid builds up inside the body, it makes the kidneys worse. So you got to understand this loop because too many people only think it's a one-way street, but it's actually both ways. And so the reason we want to be concerned about it is because when you start to have it, now symptoms wise, you're going to have all sorts of symptoms acutely. So you might see that your heart rate is beating faster. Why? Because you're trying to breathe faster. You may feel really weak or really tired. You might even have headaches or confusion because of the acid that's starting to build up. And some people will come back and say there's a loss of appetite. So in advanced kidney disease, acidosis can cause um, loss of appetite, but so can the buildup of toxins. And how do you know which one is which? Well, we have treatments that we'll get to in a second as far as that goes. But it's not just the short-term effects. It's the long-term effects. So what are the long-term effects of acid? So acid, as you know, if I was to pour acid inside, you know, Michelle's house, she would kill me, first of all. <laughs> but let's say I got away with that and I poured it on the floor. What does it do to the floor? It eats away at the floor. Now imagine that extra acid inside your body. What does it do to your bones? It causes osteoporosis. It leaches out all the minerals from your bones. So metabolic acidosis will lead to a much higher risk that you're going to break your bones, get fractured. When we talk about kids, for example, when kids have kidney disease, what happens if we leave the acidosis there? They can't grow to be their full potential. So in other words, it can prevent the release of growth hormone in young people. And growth hormone in young people is needed for proper growth. Now, kidney disease, the challenge that you have is the more acid you have, the more is going to cause that kidney function to start to decline faster and faster and faster. And it's not limited to bones. It's not limited to kidneys. It also starts to cause muscle loss. So this is really fascinating because excess acid will eat away at the muscles and the muscles will start to break down. And if you've seen folks who are older, we talk about muscle wasting. Well, in kidney disease, it's the same concept that there is muscle wasting. And then the other part of this that ends up happening is this acid or acidic environments, they can happen for a couple of things. So for example, if you're a diabetic and you have a lot more metabolic, which is the body, acidosis, you will also find that you have 
insulin resistance. And so this makes it difficult because blood sugar levels are going to run higher. And if you watch one of our previous episodes where we talked about sugar and how sugar is causally, meaning cause and effect, is causally linked to kidney disease. Now you have an environment with more acid leading to more insulin resistance, leading to more sugar, which is leading to kidneys getting worse. And then the final thing you want to know about this is what is the ultimate thing that happens? It leads to early death. And so as a result of all of this, there's lots of treatments. Now, Michelle's going to talk about what the food options are, but we also have pills and those pill options are really things like sodium bicarbonate. We don't really use potassium bicarbonate that much because kidney patients, potassium is already high, but it's sodium bicarbonate. The other thing is we use sodium citrate. Citrate is just a precursor, meaning it converts into bicarbonate. But keep in mind, the word sodium is in all of the things we're mentioning. So we'll talk about all the wonderful negative things that the word sodium comes with. But before we do that, as we're talking about options on how to correct um, metabolic acidosis, Michelle, when we think about this, what about fruits and veggies? You know, as we talk about this stuff, can fruits and veggies sort of step in and do stuff kind of like what sodium bicarbonate can do? Yeah. So the capacity of any food to produce either acid or alkali um, is called the potential renal acid load. And we've talked about this in other episodes, um, but protein rich foods produce more acid and fruits and vegetables produce more alkali or more base. And so they've actually, um, there was a study that they looked at, it was a five-year study, but they looked at non-diabetic kidney disease patients that had acidosis and they were assigned either to sodium bicarbonate, um, fruits and veggies, or just their usual care. And so after the five years, what they found is that both the sodium bicarbonate group, so the people prescribed that uh, medication and the fruit and veggie group both raised their serum bicarbonate levels. So it helped to treat the metabolic acidosis, but the people who were in the fruit and veggie group had, um, better cardiovascular markers. So they had lower systolic blood pressure. And so it just goes to show not that there is not that the sodium bicarbonate is not something that's used and wrong and that you shouldn't be doing, but everyone can and should be working to have more fruits and veggies in their diet because of either the capacity to help treat metabolic acidosis or to help prevent metabolic, metabolic acidosis in people with kidney disease. So, um, so knowing that, I mean, again, everyone, that's why we're so like, fruits and veggies, fruits and veggies, but sodium bicarbonate, can you explain then what is that, right? How does that work? And then, um, I, well, then we'll get into kind of that, the household remedy that people want to try to just drink in place no, of it. Basically sodium bicarbonate is nothing more than salt and baking soda. That's probably the simplest explanation. And it comes as pills, which it's kind of hard to swallow, but it comes as pills, it comes as liquid, and you can take both of them if that's something that your nephrologist is asking, but you have to understand what is the effects, but more importantly, what is the side effects of what's going to happen when you end up taking these? So can someone then, like, let's just say someone has kidney disease and they don't want to eat fruits and veggies, can they just drink baking soda? Yeah, it's a terrible, terrible idea. So hear me out. Whenever you, you hear somebody on the internet trying to tell you like, you know, take this concoction and it's going to fix your kidney disease, please don't unless you fully understand it. You know, it's, it's um, in my world right now with weight loss medications, everybody wants Ozempic, Vigovi, etc. It's the same exact thing is nobody wants to understand the full scope. So I said the most important thing in sodium bicarbonate is the sodium part. And why should you care? Because as you start to put too much salt, if you put too much salt and your body can't manage the levels inside your blood, you can actually get seizures from it. And so too little salt can give you seizures, coma, and death. Too much salt can give you seizures, coma, and death. So this is not a minor thing. You can get nausea and vomiting from it. You can get muscle pain from it. You can have stuff like where you have to pee all the time. You can start to build up fluid. If you have any heart issues and the heart can't pump well enough, the salt is like a magnet for water. So it's holding on to water. Now you have all this extra volume that your heart has to try to squeeze. If it can't, 
the blood will back up where? It will back up into your lungs. We call that pulmonary edema. And on top of all of these things, the bicarbonate portion, if you're not under the guidance of a healthcare practitioner who's monitoring your blood work, you can go from the acidosis side to much, too much of the alkalosis side. And once again, seizures, coma, and death from the salt component, but metabolic alkalosis in itself can actually cause your heart to slow down. It can cause you to slow down your breathing going on because the concept there is, is if your alkalosis, meaning too much alkaline in your body, what does your lungs try to do to counteract that? So let's think about this for a second. When there's too much acid, we said the lungs breathe faster to blow off the acid in the lungs. If there's too much alkaline in the body, the lungs don't want to breathe fast. They want to slow down their breathing so that they can hold on to the acid to counteract the alkaline. So what happens? Breathing can become incredibly slow. So this is why it's not a simple answer is why don't you just take that stuff? A much better answer is the one that Michelle just talked about, which is why don't you eat more fruits and vegetables? The data shows that you're going to get exactly the same benefits from a diet that's predominantly plant-based as you are with taking salt and baking soda. So if that's the case, and then you're going to get the antioxidants, you're going to get the fiber, you're going to get the water that's packaged perfectly inside the fruit and vegetables, why the heck wouldn't you take nature's best medicine instead of just me giving you some salt and baking soda? Yep. Great question. And, um, and again, we're not saying you're prescribed that, like not to do that by any means, but it's where, again, prevention and being proactive are things that we're always, we're always preaching. So hopefully that answers your guys' question a little bit on metabolic acidosis, uh, so, um, sodium bicarbonate, baking soda, and eating more fruits and veggies. We'll see you guys next time. Thanks, guys.